How's that? <clears throat> Anyone hear me now? Yeah, it wasn't an error. It it was just <laughs> it was just me being stupid. Because I, I didn't, I, I made a new scene in OBS and I did not, um, I did not, uh, I just didn't add an audio source. So that's that. There, there's not, not much more to it, honestly. Uh, yeah, cool. So, so I have actually no idea what we're going to do today. I just thought maybe people are sitting somewhere at home and um yeah so <laughs> cool um yeah i might not i might not get all of chat so i'm sorry for that it's as we're as we're coding at the same time, this might not be super possible. But okay, my my sort of goal today was to get a little bit of um, to get a bit of a hugging face tuning something uh, going. So the idea is to uh, do question answering training, maybe make that into a little video later. But um, I have no clue how this is going to go. Also, I got my trusty weights and biases cup here with warm tea. This the, the stream is not sponsored, but <laughs> it is an awesome it is an awesome beaker. Like I I genuinely don't like tea in like these tiny cups that only hold like two or three deciliters. It's it just sucks. Okay. What was the first machine learning algorithm I implemented? I, I have no idea, honestly. Probably we had to implement like support vector machines by hand at some point. Yeah, that was it. Okay, so. Wait, if I click on this, the other thing is going away. Uh, okay. Maybe I can pop out chat here. I'm trying to, to follow the chat as closely as I can. Uh, forgive me for getting not tea, you need coffee. <laughs> oh yes, there's one other thing we need to do. There's one other thing and that is one second. That is obviously we need to do a chroma key on the video right here. No? Yeah? Is this even not too bad? Like I can't see it in the previewer. I don't know if you see it or not, but OBS is is screwing up, so I can't really see it. But this seems fine, right? You can see sort of through through me. All right. So so <laughs> prediction someday at the Lex Friedman podcast. What's the story behind the sunglasses? I just put them on randomly and then sort of that became my brand. No, it's <laughs> like, it's, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that that was a wise choice, but it is what it is. So, okay, the goal, let's say the goal, the current goal is a uh, train question answering. Let's do that. And I have not prepared this, so the previous was nicer. You mean this screen, but now you can see the screen behind me. So if something's here, you'll be able to see it. <laughs> yeah, but the settings might not be might not be super good. One second. Well, these are polarized, so <laughs> I don't see exactly too much. Which route do you suggest? Passionate product, product management or ordinary <laughs> engineer? <laughs> Chat product manager and beta ML engineer. Um, well, do whatever you, you have fun doing. It's, uh, people, I feel people make, make too much uh, fuzz about career 
choices and I don't know. It seems like you should just do whatever you want to do. And as long as you have fun doing that, there, there's really nothing that can, that can go wrong. So just do that. That seems, seems like the most logical thing. Okay, so what we're going to do is a little bit. Let's, yeah, let's say we're in Hogging Face and I have not trained a Hogging Face model in a while. And this API keeps changing and progressing. So my first question is, can I, I know there's this pipeline thing. What about training an answer question <laughs> model instead? <laughs> um, that's actually what we're going to do. So one of the techniques for getting better question answering is to produce questions from the answer, which I hope is what we might be able to do this now. So uh, best way to get started with machine learning. Uh, I don't know, do some tutorials. Uh, I think just whatever, whatever you like, there's there's enough information out there, especially for beginners. Oh, no, wait, proper product placement. I need to hold it like this into the camera. Ah, so refreshing. Um, so I know there's this, um, this pipeline thing, right? The question is, can I fine tune a pipeline, right? Can I, um, can I fine tune a pipeline or essentially, can I train a pipeline? But, or is this only for inference? So I don't know. Here under fine tuning a pre trained model, um, can you train hugging face models with CPU? Sure, but do you have Omni, Omi, Omicron? I have no idea. Um, You can fine tune a model, right, with this trainer. However, uh, the model would be sort of, you know, like a model like this. So where do they get the model from? The model is like a auto model for sequence classification. It is not a pipeline. And th the good thing about the pipeline, obviously, is that it makes, you know, things like loading data sets and, and uh, uh, stuff like this pretty, pretty easy. My question is, where, where does the tokenizer come in right here? So you see pre process your data, um, input function, tokenized data sets. So you need to set up, you need to set up the tokenizer um, at the data sets, and then input the model as this model right here. So it seems like fine tuning a pipeline might not be a thing. What hardware do you plan on using? I'll just do a collab for now. <laughs> I guess that's my, that's gonna be my thing or even fully, fully locally. Um, yeah. All right. Test trainer evaluation strategy compile. Fine-tuning in native PyTorch. I don't want to do that. I just want to do it with the trainer, with the trainer API. That seems fine. All right. Um, let me quickly pull out a collab um, or open a collab. And I'm sorry if sometimes I'm going to pull stuff to the side right here because I have no clue what's going to pop up. All right, we have one with the absolute awesome name of Untitled 2. And we're going to change that to Hogging Face Question Answering. So, how much GPU size do you have? Currently none. What do you mean by fine tuning a pipeline? You can fine tune a model only. Yeah, exactly. You can fine tune a model, but there's this pipeline abstraction that sort of, so if I, um, maybe I can, I can show you. So let's place this in here again, right? There is this, uh, pipeline and it takes care of a lot of stuff. 
So if you did question answering, right, you can just load a model and the tokenizer. And what it would do, ah, what it would do is essentially it would, uh, it would handle all of the sort of plumbing around question answering, right. But we don't, uh, we're just gonna do it by ourselves. I think that's pipeline batching. Yeah. Pipeline custom code. Yeah. Um, implementing a new pipeline. No, and then we have just uh, <laughs> oh, to use models for inference. Okay, now the question has been answered. All right, let's see whether we can um, question answering fine tune example. Because we're not going to do anything ourselves. We're just going to use stuff. Okay. 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 I mean, there must be, there you go. Learn how to fine tune a model for question answering squad. So this is going to be our first thing. We're going to fine tune model for question answering. Then we're going to try to use um, we're going to try to use the model that we've we've trained as a baseline and we're going to try to train another model that will generate questions given some answers and uh, then we're going to augment our data set using those pairs and then hopefully that will lead to a better data set yeah i've seen papers that do this and in, in question answering especially in natural questions and this has been really has been sort of improved, but or has been improving the state of the art, but who knows. Um, I'm a student in need of compute for a project. Any advice for compute and in general? Not really. I mean, there's there's Colab, there's, there's quite cheap cloud compute. And if you are a student, your university might have um, your university might have some resources or sometimes the big companies, they give sort of credits to university students. So I don't know, it might, it might take a bit of politics, but you can usually get stuff. All right, let's see. I've, as I said, I haven't done this in a long time. So yeah, so we quad, we have a tokenizer. Do we need the distillbert. Okay. Ba -da -da -da, ba -da -da -da, ba -da -da -da. Fine tune. No, we don't want TensorFlow. Okay, this seems okay enough. Sequence classification, token classification, question answering. PyTorch notebook. Well, there is already one. Why did we open a new? <laughs> why did we open a new one? <laughs> Uh -huh. To be able to share your model with the community now we don't want that. All right, so let's start. Yeah. Okay, no need to log in. But what we want to do is um, we also want to install one DB because um, how do we do that exactly? Let's check. Yep, got it. And code and uh, 
This is just logging. Okay. I thought we have it. Yeah. All right. Thank you. What's wrong? Ah. Very smart, very smart. <laughs> Should have made it quiet. Anyway, okay, so we need to install git LFS. Great. So what do we go here? We're going to for squad v1 or v2. We're going to use distilbert batch size of 16. We're going to use the datasets library, which is pretty good. Then, okay, we're going to show some random elements. Preprocess fine tuned evaluation. Seems easy enough. We'll do that and we'll figure out in the meantime what we need to do in order to, to go further. Yep, yep, yep. Uncomment the first line. <laughs> yes, I, 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 was, I was absolutely able. Okay, appending. Okay, good. So we're logged in. Nice. Um, let me open. Let me open. Let me open the one DB. Mm -hmm. We'll figure it out once we log something, right? I guess we can just run all now. All right, this looks good so far. We got probably the same random examples. And so here you see how this, this data set is uh, built. Um, this is made from Wikipedia articles. So the, the, the data set creators, they always sort of grabbed a paragraph from Wikipedia. I think it's always kind of the first one. Not sure. So I don't know, carrot. I think it's always this one, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it might be any one, but I think I'm also not sure of the exact differences between squat v1 and, and v2. Uh, however, that's kind of, uh, yeah. Do you have your own GPU workstation or at university? So our university had uh, a cluster they built it up during my PhD, which is which is fairly big. Um, but our group also had sort of our own own GPUs. Um, yep. No, where were we? So yeah, this is sort of a paragraph. Uh, this is, I guess, the ID of the or the title of the um, of the article in Wikipedia. And then there is a question like, what was proclaimed the state? religion under Theod Theodosius the first and then there is an answer and um, the answer is somewhere in the text so it's extractive um, ex extractive tech question answering and you can see here Christianity or sorry Nassim Christianity is the correct answer now the answer might actually be multiple times mentioned multiple times in the paragraph and it is important that you not only get the answer correct but you get the correct index so you also need to decide which if it's mentioned multiple times which of the mentions is the correct one and that would be sort of the one that directly answers the question so it's a pretty strict 
and um, but it's so this is close domain extractive question answering it has sort of a reputation of being a lot about kind of keyword finding and sort of comparing the model doesn't need to understand that much about uh, yeah the question is out of frame what what oh why does this keep happening thank you no wait huh huh okay I'm out of frame too <laughs> look at that <laughs> um all right how do, how do I fix this I'm out of frame okay so hmm hmm Isn't YouTube 16 by 9? Because I'm streaming 16 by 9. If you see like here in OBS, right? You can see. Ah, oh, no, okay. It's the side of, it's the side of the, the screen here. Okay, we might be able to fix this. Uh, there's, there's probably a crop somewhere going on. You see, there's nothing here. OBS is screwing this up. Crop right. There's no crop right. None. So I don't know what's what's going on. All right, we'll just have to live with it. I think this is OBS not not handling uh, the screen resolutions well. In any case, oh yeah, you can see me totally fine. All right, I was confused about that. All right, sorry. So the answers, if you're able to see them, I'll try to make it a little bit more inside. Uh, the answer right here is a string and also an index into the text. So 169, and I'm going to guess that points to sort of this piece right here. All right, so this is the data set. And uh, pre-processing the training data consists of what? Consists of instantiating the tokenizer. Um, then you can see that we tokenize on two sentences, one for the answer, one for the context, okay? And depending on your model, we'll see different keys. Yeah, okay, so what's this? What is your, no, this is beginning of sentence, right? Um, 102, what's 102? What is your name? Is maybe this run right here, then it's sort of the end of sentence and then it's another um, my name is Sylvain and then it's another end of sentence that's this tokenization the attention mask is there okay so we can feed things to this tokenizer with a max length then what we do is we go through the data set um, let's find a long example uh, this is just exploring. If we just truncate, we'll lose information. So we need to go sort of in a stride over the data set, but the tokenizer is doing this for us. Now we have a list of input IDs. Okay, so we split up eat the context if it's too long into these these different things into these uh, different different chunks and we iterate over the data set. Here you can see that the question is always the same, but um, for the context, for the context, we'll, we'll truncate the second or we'll stride over the second thing. So here is the men's basketball team has over yada, 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 yada. Ooh. And if you're at the end here, 
well, that is a long context. <laughs> um, you see the 32 wins were, that is the end. And that is not the beginning here. The beginning is championship. So if I, I'm going to guess if you go on here, you're going to see the 32 wins somewhere in Yeah, you see here, the 32 wins were the most. So it's kind of striding over this document. Any new machine learning street talk episode coming? Uh, yes, yes, there is one coming We're we're working on it. Um, when do you release a Udemy course? <laughs> nah, nah, I don't have the stamina to create a, a course. Um, and I, I think other people are, are better at that. But who knows? I don't know. Does it make a Udemy course? <laughs> no, not yet. Not yet. Uh, okay. This will give us, we need to find which of those features the answer is, where exactly the models will you require to start an end position, mm -hmm. to map parts of the original context to some tokens. Thankfully, the tokenizer can help us by returning an offset mapping. This gives for each index of our input IDs, the corresponding start and end character in the original text that gave our token. That's pretty useful. Is this, how new is this? Because I remember having to do this myself, which was awful. Um, or I just didn't know about this. The very first token has zero, zero because it doesn't correspond to any part of the question answer. The second token is the same as the characters zero to three of the question. Uh, the how here, that is one token. And so the, that goes from zero to three, and then the next token goes from four to eight. Four would be many to eight. You can see that the white space is sort of falling away. So not every character is covered by an ID. This is pretty useful. Mm. Um, yeah. Oh, that's what they, they do right here. So first token ID, input IDs, okay, we get this offsets, we get this, and then we uh, get the token. And we also get it from the question, you can see that it's almost the same, but it has been lower cased. Um, yeah, to, to anyone who's new, we'll train question answering, but we'll also just, I've not, I've not prepared also chatting. Let's do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll I kick the bot. <laughs> or hit it. Cool. All right. So so we can use this mapping to find the position of start and end tokens. I have to distinguish which part of the offset correspond to the question, which correspond to the context, sequence IDs. Okay, the sequence ID says zero and one for the question and the context respectively. It returns none for the special tokens. Okay. So if we now have an answer, let's say we have an answer and the answer start, which is the index, right, into, into the, um, which is the index into the text, the end character, we can figure out by simply taking the length of this answer and adding it to the start. And what we're going to do now, start 
token index of the current span in the text. So we're simply going to loop over the entire thing until we reach uh, the second thing. So, you know, here is the question and here is the context. So we're going to loop until we hit one, which is the first token. Um, and then we're going also to find the end index of that. We're going to the end here. And we're going from the end, we're subtracting negative one until we reach okay, that's, that's cool. Then we're going to um, detect if the answer is out of the span, in which case this feature is labeled with the CLS index. There's a lot of like plumbing to do, right? If the offsets of the start token in of the token start index. So now we're going to look at these offsets. So where in the original text is a given token, if that's outside of the um, starting character, which we have right here. So if that is smaller, Okay, so if the answer is somewhere after the start index, so if the answer is somewhere after this one and somewhere before the last one right over here, then we have the answer in this context, otherwise we don't. And this code here is to figure out where exactly the answer is in that. We can double check that it's indeed the theoretical answer. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the answer that's given from the data set. And then we're also going to tell the tokenizer to decode from the start position to the end position uh, in the input IDs. And we got it. Cool. Okay, so we also tell it to pad right. Let's put everything together in one function, we will apply to our training set. In the case of impossible answer, the answer, another feature being another context, we set the CLS index for both the start and the end position, we could also simply discard those examples from the training set. If the flag allow impossible answers is false. Okay. Alright, so this is prepare train features, we're going to Will you explain how to handle long texts for train and inference? Yeah, that's what they do right here, right? They, they simply set this stride right here. And um, so they stride over the context. That's what they do in the tokenizer. So the tokenizer is going to emit always the question and then a part of the document. And th this part is strided over the document. And then for each one, you're trying to figure out where the answer is in the context. And if the answer is inside, you, you try to figure out where if the answer is outside, you, you'd simply say this, the answer is nowhere in here, which you dummy encode as saying the CLS token is the correct answer. So, um, which gives you also an indication of whether or not the question is unanswerable, which is going to be important in later data sets, for example, natural questions has questions that are sort of unanswerable. And uh, having sort of a this this gives you like an immediate classifier. So that's how I guess how you do it. What's the best way to detokenize text? I don't know, give it to the tokenizer and say, say, uh, decode right here. Trunk Okay, so here we put everything together. Um, okay, this pad on right. Yeah. Max length stride return overflowing tokens true Turn offset mappings true. Ah, this is what you need to put to get these mappings. Padding, we pad to the max length. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, and now for each, now we loop offset mapping. So here we get a dictionary and we're going to get the offset mappings out of it. And we're going to fill other in entries here. It's calling start positions and end positions. Okay, I guess we can skip over that. But at the end, we're going to end up with sort of a, a dictionary that I guess we can look at it right here. Nope. Oh, okay, this is... Uh, we can't, we can't, this is not a global variable. All right, but in any case, we have, ah, this one here, features. Features is a dictionary, no, a batch encoding, but this should be the same-ish as a dictionary. Does this work? Yeah, exactly. So we have input IDs, which is, are the samples. Um, what T do you have? Weights and biases T, obviously. <laughs> it's uh, some kind of berry T. You can activate Vim on Colab. Mm, mm. Let me figure that out. I know, I've, knew, I've known this, but I somehow don't like, I don't like, um, I'm not too, too much of a fan of, Vim bindings in other things. I'll try where view tools settings. There we go. Yeah, da, 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 da. Um, okay. Good. We have we have Vim bindings. All right. Not too big of a fan because I, I don't have all my key bindings like my VimRC. It's not the same. All right. And finally, finally, we'll have a tokenized uh, data set uh, by applying the map function to data sets. All right. And then we instantiate the model from the checkpoint. Where is this? Where does this come from? See, now I search for it, and I don't know. I don't know where it is. Right. Um, so I need to search like this. And where is it? Ah, it's on top here. It's just not not too pleasant of an experience to have in bindings. But continue. So we'll load up the model like this from the checkpoint, right? Then um, we'll have some training arguments right here. Yada, yada, yada. Push to hub. No. Um, yeah, exactly. So. Okay, we've instantiated our trainer, and now we can just say train. <laughs> and if this is working out all, we should be able to see this in our 1DB um, dashboard. There we go. Wait, let me break out the tab here. Do we have an accelerator even? Um, runtime type. 
we do not. All right, let's try again. Runtime. Restart and run all. So in the meantime, we can think of what do we do in order to actually uh, do what we came here to do, namely um, wait. <laughs> is this on a custom data set? No, it's on squad. Squad is a question answering data set. So what we want to do is we want to actually take the squad data set and generate more questions from it. So what we need to do is we need to train a model to take in a um, a context and an an answer and give us the question, right? This is is different. So it's a bit like um, we actually need to do generation of text and not just question answering. And we can take that data set and feed it back into the question answering. So how do we do that? Um, we need some sort of a text generation um, model. So we go on to the hub, let's say, here we have examples, fine tuning with custom data sets. Um, sequence, what's this? Sequence classification, token classification, question answering. It's all along the along the same lines, but what we need to do is a text generation, right? So um, train, and what do we want? Maybe a T five or so, or or maybe a GPT two. Some some model like this we could we could generate. So maybe we'll start real small with like a distill GPT or something and we'll fine tune it. Okay, so let's take that. Can we fine tune the distill GPT? Probably. Or do we have to fine tune GPT and then um, that's we already had this. How to fine tune a model on? Yeah, okay. Translation, summarization speech recognition, audio classification, language modeling. Hmm. Which one? I guess the translation might be most appropriate to us, no? Since Since um, what we want to do is we have like an input, like it's a sequence to sequence task. And can we already see anything? No. But we're training. Oh, we don't see anything yet. Let's see. Ah, there we go. Hey, where are me charts? We only have that yet. We didn't actually log anything yet. Okay. But Okay, we have a GPU now. That's good. Yeah, see, there's no, 
no epoch yet. I mean, <laughs> this is it's gonna take a while. <laughs> I have a feeling it's gonna take a while, right? <laughs> it's just five hours. Look at that. Okay. In the meantime, we need to we need to figure out um, what to do. So where do we need to hook in? Um, where do we need to hook in? Why not question answering? We're doing question answering. We're just doing it a little bit weird. Um, where do we hook in in order to find? So I feel the. Um, I feel. The data set here is just fine, right? We get input IDs, which contains this contains the this contains the but do we really need to point so if we give it if we give it start and end positions those are the labels hmm. input IDs the point with these transformers is you can always you can give them right you can you can give them a part of the input as labels like what we had as the sequence IDs before these are zeros and ones and usually you do zeros for like the um, for the first sentence and ones for the second sentence or here you do zeros for the question and ones for the context can we somehow abuse this to mark the answer probably not maybe what we need to do is we need to give it the context the answer and then produce the question but in an autoregressive way I'm late. Can someone shortly explain what we're trying to achieve? So we're just we've just analyzed this notebook here that fine tunes um, question answering, and we're seeing now that it's just going to take way too long. Um, but the goal is to take this and actually produce questions, new questions. So we're going to train a date this, a model that takes in the context, then the answer and then gives us um, a question. So that is that is the goal right here. And for that, we are looking at fine tuning, fine tuning a translation model, fine tuning a pre trained model, common downstream tasks. Here, we're going to fine tune a translation model. But the tokenizer, uh, this is very, very much into translation. This is another sentence. Can we fine tune a T5? Um, is that too big of a model? T5. See, people have done this before. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Ah, they used, they used, this is an old version. Classification sentiment span extraction. Mm, summarization, okay. So we could potentially use this right here. Is full stack advantage? Okay. Attractive summer. Yep. So this and that we got a GPU. What are they doing here? custom data set. So we're outputting source IDs, target IDs. 
Does this still run? I wonder. Let's just sort of let's just sort of stop this right here. Interrupt. And let's give this a try. Too many sessions. Yeah, just Okay, good stuff. Well, this is this is training by hand. So essentially all we need to do is we need to get the squad data set and we need to replace the summary. Um, we need to explace, uh, replace the, the summary source with the context and answer and then the summary target with the question. This should be okay-ish. Um, I have done this already now. Sorry, I need to log in briefly into one DB. Just putting someone something else in my control C in my clipboard. Okay. So we got an error. This might be an old an old thing. The sentence piece library. We can do that. Yep. Da -da -da -da. So now we just splice the two together. Where is loader, train, okay. This goes from a data frame. Uh -huh. Probably be easier if we do if we did the um, so we need these source mask and here we need source mask as well target IDs source IDs and source mask we also need a tokenizer so I feel we can copy over the data set from the last one and okay good so now we we don't have the data set, which is fine. Mm -hmm. T5 for conditional, where does this come from? Have you tried Comet? I have not tried comment, I'm sorry. T5 
t5 for conditional generation that's what we need with a language modeling head on top yes so input ids position embeddings from a t5 tokenizer what about target returns a loss labels ah there we go no this is sequence classification how can we compute the loss if we have batch size sequence length How do we compute a loss exactly if we don't have targets? Like, ah, here, label. So you just give, okay. I guess we can do that. All right, so here, here's what we do. We'll do a new collab as we had it here. We'll just make our own. And we'll click, clicky click together, whatever, whatever we need. So this is probably gonna yell at us. No, okay. Do we have the GPU? Change runtime type, GPU, yes. It's going to yell at us. We're going to terminate the others and close. <laughs> I've just started a job and your channel is a constant source of inspiration. Thank you. I hope I'm not destroying that today. <laughs> Because live streams are, are quite a bit more, more boring. But we'll try our best. Yes. Okay. Good. We'll, so we get the data set and then we get this. We'll, we'll just try that. We'll, we'll try the T5 thing that they have here. So this is for inference. This is for, yeah, we can do this. This is fine. Are the Vim bindings still here? No, they're not. Um, tools, settings, editor, Vim. So Okay, we still need sentence piece. Excellent. Favorite beer? I uh, I don't I don't have a I don't drink beer. 
So, I have no idea, sorry. <laughs> okay, tokenizer. We Wait, we can't get pre-trained token. This is impossible. What's our tokenizer? None. Our tokenizer is none. How? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's grab this. Put it down here. And uh, see, my bindings don't work. This is annoying. How can this, how can it be? All right, help me here. Why is this, why is it none? Why is the tokenizer none? Have you experienced imposter syndrome, like long periods without published papers? How did you go through? Yeah, I think, yeah, this is quite, unless you're like super stellar at academia, this is very, very common. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like, it, it seems like everyone else knows more than you and you can't like, you just can't let it get you down. And also a lot of research fails, right? But I mean, I think for most people, the answer is just to prevail there. It might be a little bit tricky if you have, like if you really have a wrong topic that where it's really hard to publish stuff. Yeah, but oh, okay. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I'm just seeing that, no, not again. Sorry, need, need to get a quick power. Ay, ay, ay. See, this previously happened on live stream where I was streaming and my battery just kept decreasing in power. And now I even have the big charger here. But when I did the Minecraft stream, that was the case. So even though it was plugged in, it would just slowly decrease in 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 battery over time. So I might have to stop. It might just break at some point, and I'm I'm really sorry. Um, but yeah, we'll see how long this lasts. Okay. In any case, did we figure out? Did we figure out why um, the tokenizer here is none? Maybe we have a wrong one. So up T five small. All right. I mean, this should be should be okay. No. Maybe ah, we can get an auto tokenizer. All right, instead of a an auto tokenizer, instead of using the T five class, seems reasonable enough. So like this, let's take this, put it here. Um. That's better. Okay. All right. See, n none of this Vim stuff is working. I if I if I cut if I cut this and okay, I can paste it, but 
I like it. I have I don't have my my zero buffer. Aren't you afraid that your search history will pop up when you type the search bar? Yes, yes, I'm afraid. Well, I'm afraid. I mean, it will pop up, but I'm not I'm not that interesting of a I don't think my searches are interesting enough to warrant big worry. Um yeah. I I'm rather yeah. What are we working on? We're trying to make a model that uh, that gives us questions to answers, which so let me update the text right here. Current goal, just chatting, also training model that Okay. <laughs> All right. So now let's look at our loss. Our loss should be a number. Prediction scores are something. One seven thirty two. That's probably the vocabulary. That's probably the length. I guess because the input IDs. What's the input IDs should be a tensor of length seven. All right. So and then we can use the second line right here in order to conditional generation from pre trained that's the same line that's the same line that's the same line and there we can generate stuff from it and the outputs here are so let's give it two outputs decode Da, 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 da. List cannot be interpreted as an integer. How about that? Yep. So there you go. That is. Uh, hello, my dog is cute. Wait. Hello, my dog is cute. Uh, no. Shouldn't we sort of auto regressively and shouldn't we be able to generate text from this? I have no idea how this how this works. Generate inputs, max length, min length do sample early stopping uh let's let's put 10 here mhm mm so cute and cute Use batch decode. Yes, true, absolutely. Very cool. All right, so we can force it to to create something. Now we need a data set, and we'll copy this from here. We'll get the squad data set. Uh huh. Uh, da 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 da. Data sets. Do we have data sets over here? We have data sets. Cool. We'll get the squad data set, load data set, squad. Let's just go with squad. Um, uh, 
data sets is not defined. All right. Good. Let's just remind ourselves and mostly me how, how this works. Okay. Yeah. So this is all this is all good. I used to we used to all do the, all of this by hand, right? Like load the data and process pre-process stuff and yada yada yada. So and this has been it's gotten so much easier recently. It is it is crazy. Um, so we'll get the training data set. And this is an indexable, right? This is not just an iterable. Yeah. So it's technically what we can do is um, how does this map work right here? Um, map. Right, we can we can do this, um, this map function. No, yep. We can do this map function. And what it does is you can give it a like takes a callable accepting a dict as an argument and iterates over the data set by calling the function with each example. So that's what we do. We'll map it. Or how do we how do we then train? How do we train? Trainer dot train. So we got the model. We have a data set, and how does the data set need to be structured for training? That's my my only other question. So, like, how do we how do we know what the the loss is? Um. IMDB. Tokenize function. So we tokenize it. But then what's the How do we tell the model? what the label is. We just give it the data set, but is that just like inherent in this data set? Because uh, here you see map. So we return, we map the tokenize, tokenize the data sets small train data set, right? This is what I don't get. So we simply extract the text. And we tokenize it, which is cool, which is fine, right? But then we only have the text. Um, how does it know what the labels are? labels now this is for evaluation report metrics report metri metrics hmm. this must be inherent to the data set somehow auto returned by tokenizer ah okay Okay, I see. Cool. So if if we transform this right now, so let's make a function. Um, 
dev uh, process data. Because why not? Because <laughs> I feel like implementing a Turing machine, every function could be called process data. Um, so this, this is going to be an example right here. We, we pass and at the end we'll just uh, mm -hmm. we'll pass in the zero f data point right here. All right, so if we do this, we'll just get our normal our normal thing. Now what we need to do is we need to get the context, the answer and the question. And for the context and the answer, let's just concatenate them. Um, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do the cheapest. We'll do like the GPT three uh, cheap trick right here. So hmm. process data of data. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so we'll we'll do the um, input uh, text is let's put the context right here. Um, and we'll do we'll do GPT three style, we'll do um, context colon of this. And we'll do um, answer colon I know T5 does things differently a little bit, but we don't care. Example answers. Do we have multiple and we could have multiple answers, but we'll just take whatever the first one is. So the answer um, text zero like that. So this is going to be our input. And then this one right here is the prompt. And output text is going to be simply the question. All right, now we need a uh, the tokenizer, the tokenizer. Um, we have it somewhere up, right? Good. Oops, oops, oops. See what did I do? Uh, encode. The input text. So these are going to be the input IDs. Do we need a mask? Oh, we can give it two things. Can we also give the T5 thing two things? Maybe not. Tokenizer. Probably not. It's going to be fine, right? This right here. Encode. Return tensors. PT. We'll do that. Um, Let's just do this once. Okay, so the input IDs is going to be hmm. good. Could we put a second one here? Like what? What happens if we do this? Then is are these two lists now? Let's see. 
this is the tensor bracket anyone see whether these are two lists probably not right so if we do this the last one is is a 10 1 and then if we do this the last one is not ah here is 10 1 and then there is 304 something something okay I mean, we could just do language modeling as such, right? And we could then even let it figure out the answers. But that's kind of crappy because we would also train it to do the context. T5 is encoder. Yeah, T5 is encoder, decoder. You must specify the decoder input plus pad plus plus label. Yeah, so the 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 query, the Q here would probably be the part of the decoder. Like here it's we're going from a T five. This is, okay, this is pandas. This is validation down here. We have target IDs and source IDs for this one, right? So input IDs, but we don't have, mm -hmm. If input IDs, decoder input IDs is this, and LM labels is what? Language model labels. Mm -hmm. So here we have input IDs, the attention mask, encoder outputs see so your decoder input IDs that's I guess also what we what we want for the decoder provide for sequence to sequence training uses the path token ID as the starting token for decoder input IDs generation if take a look at t5 training there we go We could use those extra IDs, right? Ah. Unsupervised denoising training. Supervised training. Translate English to German. The house is wonderful. Labels. Return tensors. Easy enough. Easy enough. <laughs> Thank you for Thank you for letting me letting me know. Um, so we put our end of, of sentence here. Um, then we put, let's do this. Um, yep, and our end of sentence here input IDs, labels, uh, output text. PyTorch tensors, let's remove this one. And we should be good to go. So input IDs and labels. Excellent, excellent. Where was it? Where was T5 training? Too many tabs open. Supervised training. 
Okay, if we put this into the model now, do we get a loss? That's the question. If we get a loss, everything's fine. Everything's good. Um, so where is our model? Model. Um, let's call this X because why not? My coding voice is very different. Yeah, because I can't I can't keep up hours of shouting. Um, so what if we put X into the model? That that is not cool. Okay, what if we put what if we unpack X into the model? That is better, 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 better. What is this? What's ah? Holy crap. Okay. Um, let's call this Y. And let's look at type of Y. Investigate. A sequence to sequence language model output. Thank you. That is very helpful. Um, what can I? Is it a dict? Yes, it is. Okay, so we have a loss. We have a loss. I guess that is... Why do you always wear shades? So people ask the question. <laughs> is, is branding, is just branding. <laughs> okay, so we have this, very cool. Um, now, so if we do this, we can even see it. Now we can use our data set map process data. What do they do here? Map. Um, I guess we can use batched and we can, we can, we can remove all the columns, no? We can probably remove all the columns. Module object is not subscript. Remove columns. Data sets. Ah, this is it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's not happy. It's not very happy. List indices must be integers or slices. Well, ah, okay, we should do batched false. <laughs> All right, I guess we should also drop we should probably also drop some of the too long stuff, no? I mean, that's what they, that's what they do here. They put a max length, return overflowing tokens. Ah, we don't, we don't, <laughs> we don't want that. We simply want the max length, right? Um, so, no, stop it, stop it. Okay, so tokenizer. Um, see, now is the, the trouble, right? The max length is what? The max length is what for T5 small? Does anyone know? Let's see, T5. Or can I figure can I figure this out somehow? Is there there should be this auto there's this auto config no by hugging face? Um, can I load this somehow somehow here like there is. Auto config 
from pre-trained t5 small no this should exist yeah see so here we have task specific parameters Um, model type, number of positions, number of layers, task specific parameters, vocab size, translation, summarization, max length. Is this though, is this the max length of the encoder or the decoder? I mean, here it's 512. We can do the following. We can do, we can do max length here to something. I mean, what is, what is 512? Let's say minus 128. Okay, and then and then here we can do 128 padding equals how about that so we pad everything max length min length 230 yeah thanks thank you so we'll see we'll 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 make everything such that it is at max 512 long we can still change these things we should probably like make some some variables somewhere but yeah <laughs> so um good now that the data set is mapping what can we do i guess all we have to do is give it to the to the trainer no hugging face trainer Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Compute loss, yeah. And then do we have examples right here? Sec to sec trainer. Can we just get a trainer or we do we need the specific one? Evaluate, no. Predict, no. Training arguments. Ooh, that is a model. We put in model. Yep. Train data set, eval data set. Yeah, this should be doable, no? Here. Trainer, we just give it this, and we're good. Three eighty four. Really? Hmm. I mean, we could make it even smaller, given that it's going to take a while. Also, um, we could just do this. Let's just cancel for now. How long does it take? What? But they did it. They did it up here. They did it here, no? They made this smaller data set. Um, what do I need to do? No? Yeah, here. Here is a data set. Okay, I guess they just took the training one. Mm, like this. Okay, excellent. 
So now we have a data set and we should just be able to give this to a trainer. Yes, yes. Okay, so let's get some some of them training arguments. Good. And let's also get some of them trainer itself. Good. Ah, yeah, okay, three. That's where the 384 comes from. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, model is model, this is that. And I guess, okay, so. Um, and this and that. So here we have train data set and eval data set. This seems to work so far. This is more like magic. I how wh where is all of this like code like okay. <laughs> there there seems to be so much magic going on and this this is Okay, I see. Finally, finally we get something. Um, something that crashes. So, what did we do? Input shape. Too many values to unpack in the input shape. So, where are we going wrong? Too big context, nah. We have um, we have too many, we have too many things. So here we might be, we might want to inspect this X a little more. So these are our input IDs, right? So input IDs are right here, and if we do the shape of them, we get two numbers. Now this is complaining that if it looks at the input shape, right? So if we go to T5 modeling, wow, this opens in a collab directly. This is crazy. Okay, if we go to the input shape, oh, this is the input embeddings. No, that's not true. See the input IDs, oopsie, dot size. Well, what is it? Are you, aren't you going to tell me? Too many values to unpack. Well, what is it? <laughs> so maybe we need maybe we need to batch this ourselves somehow, right? Because uh, here, you, as you can see, the shape where was it is one and three eighty four. So this already assumes that it's kind of batched. And um, if I'm, I, I might be completely wrong right here. Unpack is about the input shape being only one object. Try printing the shape. Yeah. I can print. Can I print in here? But it seems the problem is the batching, no? So does this work? This seems weird. It, like if this works, this is this is magic. I have not developed in a collab in so long. No, right? This does not. This does not work. So if all change is saved, yeah. Okay. Now it says too many values to yeah, it did not load reload this thing. Can I sorry. <coughs> so 
like the six frames. Yep. Well, it just tells me where it's happening, which I know, All right? I just compute loss, models, unpack the inputs, that's fine. I think it's the, um, the collate function is wrong. It assumes that what comes out of the data set is a single example, so it probably batches it together. Um, need to use auto reload too. Thank you. Let's try auto reload. Magic function not found. Too bad. It probably assumes that. So what we could do is we could um, simply tell it that this is not a batched thing, right? I found at least two devices. Great, now we're <laughs> process data uh, how about that there's no attribute detach Yeah, okay, sounds good. Um, we'll try again. Too many values to unpack, still no. Yeah, it still thinks it's there, but it it doesn't matter. We have bigger problems. We <laughs> we have bigger problems. Look at this thing. Um, now, where was it? Here, right? So we need to. Do we really need to get back? Which ones are on? You need to run auto reload to after load ext. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Ah, uh, okay. So, see, I'm so unfamiliar with collabs because I've just been using my Vim in my terminal um, that I have no clue about the magic functions. Okay, so. Ba -da -da -dum, ba -da -da -dum. There, yeah, there you go. Exactly. So this is what I meant. It as it batches it to eight. It assumes that what comes out of the data set is already um, a batch, and therefore it doesn't it it doesn't it doesn't get it. So either we somehow tell like the tokenizer or something that, or we we tell the the collate function. Uh, collator default will batch our processed examples together. <laughs> Let's see, there's the default one. Label IDs handles a list of values per object. Mm. 
maybe this one, data collator for sec to sec tokenizer. Dynamically pad the inputs as well as the labels. Maybe this one's good for us. So let's try this one. Um, Code in Vim. Yes, I'll make a video about my Vim config. Okay, all tensors need to be on the same device. Found at least two devices. <sighs> oh, oh. How can I? How can I? Where? Where is my? Where is my data set? So how about? How about I look at? You know what's X? What is x dot input IDs? What's the device of that? Ah, CPU. Okay. So how 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 <laughs> how do I how do I put that on? And x is what x is just. X is a data point. Now, can I just tell Hogging Face to, or do I have to actually say, um, did the model have a device? Okay. So now what we'll have to do is we'll have to input IDs equals X input IDs to model device and labels equals X labels to model device. Yeah, okay, so now we got sort of the same we got the same problem here. So we don't want to necessarily do this. We want to output this because after a while, we could also overflow and then output several, could we? Several different ones. Um, no, I guess we can continue doing this. And then here, we'll just have to do something like that or expand. We'll just go none, none. Like do a little unsqueeze. Nice. Okay. So now we still in. <laughs> oh no. Now we have, we have, we need to remove the print statement again. Otherwise, we'll just be bombarded by print statements, right? Okay. Let's do this. Let's do that. Please save. Thank you. Okay. Good. Problem solved. Happy holiday. Thank you. Happy holiday to you too. Good. We're at the next error. Expected a sequence length of 384 at dimension one got 517. What? What? We even limited it to We limited this. Got 512 data collider. Um, we're here. <laughs> label. Do we have label or label IDs? 
we have label we should have label IDs no because yeah we should have label IDs That seems reasonable. Still the same. Okay. So the problem is that here, what's F in features? Uh, what's features? What is it? A list of dict f of k. So what's k? If k is not in label and v is not none. And here we say expected the sequence of length. God, okay. Um, We can do this and we can print the length of that and let's see what happens. Three eighty four, three eighty four, three eighty four. And then we get like a long one. Why is it not respecting the max length? Um, so this one, let's see. Why is it not respecting the max length? Um, Yes, max length, pad to max length, max length. I'm just searching for this now <laughs> in all the th in all the things I have open. <laughs> yeah, I should be able to truncation true. Is that a thing? Okay, let's see. Auto models tokenizer pre trained tokenizer. Can I click on it, please? Yes, no. Oh, this is version two. Um, sure. There we go. Max length. It's called model max length, really. Truncation. Defaults to false. Well, that explains something. Let's in this case do True. How about now? Three eighty four, 
384, 384, 384, 384. This looks better. Okay. Now we just need to remove the print statements. Otherwise, the file will be gone. Cool. Okay, so this isn't too long. This isn't five hours like before. <laughs> so hopefully, um, hopefully something cool will happen. If you trunk it, you throw away everything after the first 384 tokens. Is that on purpose? Yes. Um, we can still refine, like, the, keep these tokens that it's handled in that yeah the tokenizer can sort of split and and um tokenizer can stride over the document but in first instance i'm just happy with getting any sort of result can still be refined later but we just want to train anything at all well this is the fun part so i think People sometimes ask, you know, about streaming and machine learning. And, um, you know, s streaming video games is sort of the the most, like, super entertaining, right? Because it's, it's like stuff is happening. And then streaming coding is still okay if you can talk and code and read chat and so on at the same time. But then streaming <laughs> machine learning is just sort of... So even even if we make the data sets sm deliberately small, like we did here, um, it is just, it is, it is, we just have to wait. <laughs> and then what do we do during, during waiting? Could you show line data set equals um, data set equals? Well, we have data set is simply loading it here from, we simply load the squat data set. So that's kind of trivial, but then we have this mapping function here that tokenizes the text and uh, puts it into sort of this this um, framework context and answer and we want to output the question what do you do during wait normally um, I, I watch I, I love watching loading bars and screens but usually I uh, I don't know I, I code something else I guess there is something else to code, which, which is uh, I'm I'm making like a super sure doing an AMA. Uh, am I not doing an AMA during all of the live stream sword fight? Yes, the XKCD meme. <laughs> so I see Isco if I have enough GPU left. That's a tight rope, no. <laughs> Try to stream some reinforcement learning watch an agent not really working yeah if you get the visualization set up correctly that could be something also like l smaller problems right like way smaller problems is also is also something this here i i sort of wanted to to try and oh we can we can look at our we can look at the um this here it should be yeah yeah look at this at least the cpu utilization is is going on that that is something that's happening we don't have metrics yet we might want to log more intermittently training completed training completed excellent we have we have zero logging we did log right it said it logs to it logs to 
report to yada da 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 da. Didn't it say it would log to weights and biases? Did we even log in? On DB. We didn't log in. We didn't log in. Um Oh, we did. Somewhere. At some point, maybe. Am I planning to do the ML year recap video? Did I announce an ML <laughs> review <laughs> recap? Uh, I don't know. Alpha fold happened or something. Was it this year or last year? I have no idea. Uh, the paper of the year, no idea. It's really hard to predict what paper's going to have a big impact. Um, for example, the foundation models paper, it can either have a really big impact or it can just be forgotten by everyone. It, there, there's like no, no way to tell right now. Um, yeah. What do you think about the recent hype in graph neural nets? I have not looked super much into graph neural nets. It seems it seems they're they're pretty cool, but um, they also seem to be quite limited right now because I mean they're essentially RNNs on on a dynamic graph. Check the report. Out. Yeah, so one DB has one DB has a. trainer so there should be should be possible here report to one db that's fine but um uh, with the training arguments good stuff um we might want to restart and run all Okay, now once the model has trained, we can then let it generate some stuff. I, I really don't think, I don't think that it will produce something interesting right now, but. Okay, okay, good stuff. Reusing the data set, that's what we want. Okay, here. Yes. This one. Okay, as this is going to come in, we can already think about what we want to do. So what we want to do is we want to simply take the model that we have and let it generate something again. So let's just try. Let's just try this again. I think. No. No, like. Uh, we'll try this. And where was the generate? Here. And then we do batch decode. There we go. Aren't graph neural networks just a year behind NLP or attention? I'm not sure what a year behind. You mean the like in a year they're going to be as popular? It could be. I've also seen like th there, there's also a big history of, of such things just f flopping, like there being a lot of hype and then not much. It depends. It depends if if um, sort of 
large breakthroughs, I guess, are being made in relevant domains. That's usually what fuels these things, like transformers. I think Bert Bert has transformers have existed, and I remember. Um, I remember people sort of the sentiment was yeah transformers for language they kind of work but they use so much memory and they're harder to train and so on and and people would still sort of be on the be on the fence and and say we'd rather use lstms uh, with attention and i think only the advent of bert really say so it wasn't even the attention is all you need paper it was the it was the bert paper that really fueled the um the the transformer hype so if there is something similar for graph neural networks in in a relevant domain so either in a domain that exists like but i don't i don't really see graph neural networks being that useful in vision or or nlp or something so i'm not entirely sure they are probably super useful in biology uh, but it's not like biology is that it's just not that accessible to most people and and they don't want to work in biology because if if i'm good at like if i do something in nlp like i can build a little app and so on uh, it's very tangible and very useful for most people and same with vision but with something like biological data i mean yeah sure i can download some bio data from from online but then uh you know what 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 am i going to do with it are you familiar with pinns no I'm not actually. So, so socks, <laughs> one DB socks giveaway. <laughs> well, if you if you if uh, I'm, I don't know. I, I should wear them probably. Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm trying to keep up with chat. Most interesting meta learning paper. I've, I have. I'm not. I'm not super. I don't have a. Maybe not anyone, but I don't have a good overview over meta learning. According to Eleuther, graph neural networks are largely NLP research from 2019 and 2020. And if you want to achieve SOTA, you'd have to use 2020. Uh, so you're, you're saying that current NLP methods um, beat the graph neural network methods. So when people in the past said, hey, these graph neural networks are actually pretty good, then all you had to do essentially is wait a year and then the field would have sort of caught up. I guess, I hope that's what you're saying. Um, okay, so now we're, we're, we're sort of kind of a bit ready, no? Yes? So here, um, let's say, yes, we, we can generate a context. Hi, uh, the dog was loud. And um, the answer is dog, right? And then end of sentence. Okay, and then we have Yes. Does that does that work? Okay, so input IDs and then we'll put them to device. Like this, like this. How about this? Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. You have to either decoder input IDs, okay, so encode, let's encode just the, 
I see. Ha. Huh? What am I gonna What am I gonna put here? How do I How do I have T five answer a question then? Um. No. How? Will there be Yonic merch sometime soon? Yes. Yes. There is there is merch. It's I mean, I'm still I'm still fleshing out the merch, right? I'm I'm still this is a changing thing. If you I guess you can have it today. Um <laughs> but I'm just telling you, this is it's going to change. So if you're into super rare stuff, um Maybe it's going to be deleted soon. It's also going to be augmented, but let me. Uh, let me show you. Da, 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 da. Yeah, okay, it's up. So, but as I said, this is subject to change um, and and so on. But if you, so you can either go here or you can go, the URL is, um, is store.yculture.com. That's a, that should be a redirect to the, it's a Teespring store. So, and it's going to be integrated with super rare, <laughs> super rare in the sense that I might decide something is just too dumb of an item and just remove it again, because I need to thin it out a little bit. Uh, but you know, no one stops you <laughs> from just taking like, if you if you really let's say I remove this t shirt, right? No one stops you from just taking the channel logo and slapping it on a t shirt yourself, It's it's going to be literally exactly the same thing. So, you know, the, the rarity is, the rarity is, uh, is only because people are usually too lazy to do that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna probably uh, thin this out a little bit. But I've ordered some samples. And I, I think I'll announce it once I have these samples ready. Um, there's also one, so it's it's usually it's the same. Like it's the channel logo on various items. It's sort of the the channel motto, which I don't usually highlight, but skill greater than destiny is kind of the I don't know. It's been sort of a battle cry since I was young. Um, it yeah, it's sort it sort of says that you can if you. If you dedicate yourself, you can overcome sort of the maybe the hurdles of life, whatever. It's a bit cheesy, but actually doesn't mean like if you take it literally, it's it it doesn't even make sense, right? And and but because both are predetermined, like your skill is maybe predetermined. Sure, you can learn something, but and then your destiny is like ultimately predetermined. So if if there is destiny, you can't change it. But yeah. Um, uh, maybe the paradoxical nature of it is what makes it good and appealing. And obviously, there is the attention for you <laughs> if you're so in, if if you enjoy that. And um, yeah, I think that's. It. I'm thinking of a technology good, technology bad, technology biased uh, motif as well. But that's that. If you wanna wanna do this. But as I said, it's not announced yet. 
um, it's going to change and there's also there's there's more stuff coming out in any case let's like how, how do we how do we actually generate stuff from this like okay we have a language modeling head here but what do we have here we have an auto model also with ah with a language modeling head huh so we should we should provide some inputs so let's say okay how about we make our data set such that it always starts with a Q, right? Like this. And then we could put here, we could put like Q. I'm not making NFTs. No, no, no. <laughs> Unless they actually become more useful. I'm not, I'm not going to make NFTs. Don't worry about that. Um, So we got decoder input IDs. Uh, um, yes, outputs. Wait, that's what that's what we that's what we did. Oh, okay. Oh, no, wait. Is it really? Could we do that? Aha. Hmm. Um. Okay. <laughs> well, good. Yes. Most definitely. Totally. <laughs> it's, it's a good model so far. <laughs> okay, how do I... Um, the Hugging Face Trainer. You know, how do I control its, its logging? How do I control it? log level log level replica like how often how often it logs uh, um yep yeah, yep yeah. the logging frequency yes that's what i want Frequency. Hey, where is it? Can't find it. Where is it? Okay, no. Logging steps. Does this exist? Ah, there we go. Logging steps. Number of update steps between two logs. If logging strategy equals steps. Okay. So this is steps. And we'll just set it to... Is this a trainer or is this the training arguments? Training arguments. Okay. So in our training arguments... Wait, we might want to reprocess the data set, right? And here, now let's do this because. Oh no, it's being tokenized like that. Sorry, sorry. Uh huh, uh huh. Training arguments, logging, steps, 10. 
train. Yes, please. And now we should finally see something here. Hopefully, please. Runs. This is green, so this means it's going. Yes. <laughs> Yay. And we are decreasing in loss. Excellent. Oh, wait, now I need to catch up in chat. For how long will you stream? Not for too much longer. So l maybe last year during, I remember during Christmas, um, uh, you know, everything's kind of stands still during Christmas, right? And I remember PewDiePie streaming and I thought, ah, that's neat because, you know, nothing else is going on. So, and yeah, so I, I thought I'd do the same thing and, and maybe someone will appreciate it or just be sort of mildly entertained while they search for other content. <laughs> will it be delivered all over the planet? The merch? Yeah, I think so. So I've deliberately, I first wanted to go with a different, like with, um, uh, what was it? I don't even remember the other one, but... There was another one that could be integrated with YouTube, but they are not shipping to India right now, which kind of, I thought kind of sucked. So uh, I think the Teespring should be able to ship anywhere. Um, ta -da. Don't, feed, don't feed in the decoder input IDs manually. It makes the outputs go weird. Well, it won't let me do anything else. <laughs> yeah, so I've, I have not done hugging face training in a long time uh, from scratch, so. But this is just the first, the first instance. So we should be, yay. Yeah, we're we're nicely decreasing. Nah, not towards the end here. Is this one epoch? Three epochs. Okay. Batch size of eight. Yeah, that works out. One twenty five per epoch. And then we'll see what happens in 35 seconds. Cool. Dun 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 dun. Do not forget to share your model. I don't think this model is uh, necessarily the best to be shared. Okay, so we still, we're still, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So the model isn't the best right now. What data set are you using? It's squad, so we're using squad. But I think this would be sort of the process, um, a sort of the process to get this started, right? I mean, what if I just don't do anything here? What does it do? It just gives me like an end of end of sentence immediately. Is this to be expected? Do, does the 
Does this even need an end of sentence? Not sure. Uh, so the question does does the model is the model initializing? Like if I reset the model, like uh, like this. Then, okay, this is a lot of output. If I do that and then train again, what happens? Yeah, okay. No, I don't want to learn about the newest weights and biases updates because I make ads for them. I should know about the newest features and updates. So this is better right now because before we just kept retraining the same model, right? Um, and not reinitializing it, <laughs> and now at least we're at least we're reinitializing it. See, this was like our global step was uh, we just kept resetting the same model, but now, now, you see, do we have? Is this the? That's the one that we currently have. No. We'll see in a bit, once it sinks. But even if not, you can see here, loss is going down quite nicely. Anyone know if WandaB self-hosting is fairly seamless? Training on a local GPU server to watch progress. So the I think that, like, I might be wrong, but the the self-hosting for WandaB is is mostly a thing you do as a as a company. It's not it, it's not the same as like. It's not like uh, you know here is our open source tool and you know we also host it for you if you want. They sort of take the the different approach. It's it's cloud first, and if you are. If you're a business and you say, "Well, I really need the data to stay in my, in my, in my data centers in my own uh, environment," then they'll give they'll they'll give you sort of a self-hosted environment. Um, I don't know how easy it is though to get to one if you just say, "Well, I'm an individual and I'm just maybe, yeah." I don't know, but. I guess you can ask them. So soon we should have this done. And then we can see. Then we'll have a model that's kind of trained from scratch. That shouldn't be too bad, no? Is this for research you're working on or just trying out something? This is just trying out something. I haven't done... I haven't actually done... NLP coding in a while so and I just randomly wanted to or I just randomly thought that I might might as well live stream it you know maybe we're not we're not doing a whole lot here we'll see we'll see so we got 375 steps we're almost done do we get some metrics here in the meantime not yet maybe I need to give it a different name though right I think like cuz I'm, I'm always logging to the same name that can't be too good 
what am I working on right now? Uh, I've co-founded a startup, an NLP startup, ironically, right? Which means that I work with a lot of smart people that all also know NLP. Therefore, I don't get to code NLP <laughs> anymore. <laughs> I get to code, uh, I get to code mostly plumbing. Okay, so, so, as you can see, let me, let me train. Yeah, let me get a data point from here. And <clears throat> we'll take this right here. And we'll, we'll make our... prepare data of this one how, how do we call it process data of course is there any model for transformers that don't need n squared paper uh, no but they do have pseudocode, I believe, in the paper itself. How does your day look like? Uh, it's a wild mess of whatever burns the most. It's, I do not advise. Um, <laughs> I do not advise following my daily routine. Okay, so let's call this x1. And let's input that into the model. So x1 input IDs. Not enough values to unpack. Where? How? Why? No. What? Come on. Come on, man. Um, we'll do this list uh, it needs to be a tensor so that beautiful beautiful <laughs> uh, 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 our model is terrible unk, 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 unk. how and why right It just baffles me. What if we don't train it at all? Right? Like, what if, uh, what if we just load the model and we'll just input this? How many steps do you usually train for an image classification task or an image reconstruction? Do you use small or large batch sizes? I, I don't, I don't have a general recipe. You just go with whatever is is appropriate, uh, and it also depends really on the task. So for unsupervised learning, people do hundreds of epochs. For ImageNet, I guess you can get away with a bit less. I, I think like fifty epochs or something like this. But also for yeah, it's it's. Re I know C four ten or so people use fifty to two hundred and fifty epochs, which is like a lot, right? But then heavy augmentation. Um, it's really depends fully on the task. I, I, yeah. Tell us about your startup. Sure, it's called Deep Judge. It's very cliche name, and we do NLP for the legal domain and. If you're allowed to work in the European Union, no, well, if you, if you are allowed to work in Switzerland, uh, and you want to work in Switzerland, and you're skilled in engineering, um, with an affinity for machine learning, you may, you can happily apply. That is, uh, so, yes. Let's see if Google finds us. Yes, of course, Google finds us. Okay, that is us.
<laughs> me wondering what I missed. You didn't miss anything. It's just me. It's just me dicking around <laughs> in this. <laughs> okay, so it seems like we haven't trained anything. If or or I'm just I'm just doing this completely wrong. I might want to look up some more tutorials. I've just jumped into this uh, completely. But what you can what we can do what we can do is you can see that the this x1 that we have right here right so the first data point and this is usually a good thing to do if you wonder if your model works at all so we take the training data set right uh, we look at this data point and the context is whatever architecturally the school has a catholic character yada 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 the question is to whom did the virgin mary allegedly appear in da 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 and the answer is saint bernadette whatever now what we can do is we can uh completely overfit on that one data point right that that is that is what we're going to do and for that let's restart the runtime first and foremost then we'll run this these things run this and when it comes to the data set uh, we are going to so process data right here and then when it comes to the data set we're just going to select one data point right uh, and we'll call that overfit data set I'm going to take the training data point I want to just get one single data point out of it we won't even we won't even touch those right here data set is not defined of course why would it be because I need to run this okay so da -dum. Okay, so we'll get our overfit data set, and then we'll just we'll just train on that overfit data set. And how? Where is the number of epochs? Oh, num train epochs is three. We'll just put this to um, num train epochs is I don't know like a hundred or so we'll just overfit on this one data point heavily and instead of the training data set being the training data set we'll make train data set is overfit data set and eval data set is also the overfit data set overfit data set is not defined that set ah, I see so if this works out image net is 100 to 600 epochs 50 isn't really possible okay yeah if your judge model doesn't work claim it is a company secret <laughs> Training wait already completed? This is not this is that is shady. Okay, let's try. See, okay, we're doing I'm doing something terribly wrong. Or we'll just put the number of epochs to ten thousand. Do we have output 
please. Do I need to rename? I should probably, probably rename, right? Ah, see, okay, this is the output. Now we're continuing. Yeah, we're overfitting nicely. Have you tested out the extreme overfitting approach leading to super convergence? You talked a while back. You mean the, the grokking? Yeah, I think this will be a different different domain right here, but I haven't I haven't actually done or investigated grokking any time myself. It seems super interesting though, yeah. Change the name of one DB thing. Yeah, I should. <laughs> I see no problem with training equals zero. <laughs> Are you going to do a more classic paper review? Um, yes, yeah, this is this is also planned. Um, the the classics. Why do you look like Bezos? <laughs> you, it's uh, whenever the hair gets long longer, it just gets on my nerves. Are you loading all the data? I am, but right now I'm just loading a single data point. So. Remove the end of sentence token. True, that could be, but this, isn't this part of the, I've just seen this on like one example. I might be wrong. A great masculine jaw. <laughs> What's the secret of the glasses? That there's no, there's no secret, it's just that it was a it was a maybe bad branding decision and now it's i'm stuck with them so so see but now you can you can see that we we are we are converging in yeah look at that i mean what is what is this do we we don't have validation stuff okay but Ah, uh, uh, training, total f training runtime, training loss. Hmm. This one right here. I mean, look at that. That is just a very low, very very small loss. <laughs> so we got a thousand, a thousand steps. Um, we might as well sort of interrupt. What is this? Clear output? No. We might as well interrupt a little bit. Hey, would you, would you mind stopping, just interrupting a bit? Stop. Okay. And we'll just check the output. Maybe it's something better now. Still no. Still no. Hmm. Are we doing something wrong? Unk, 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 unk. <laughs> Am I doing something wrong? I'm probably doing something wrong. Are you hiring? Yes, we're hiring. Um, but you need to be able to work in, in Switzerland, which is, it sucks and it's not available to most, to most of the world because of legal reasons, but we, we have no choice really. Um, so you need to, to be able to get a working permission. And yes, this still sucks, even though we've completely overfit, which means that we're, I'm doing something quite wrong. The question is what? <laughs> 
what? What's so wrong? May, I may not, I may not use this in the exact correct way right here. So, um, I could sample, I guess. So do sample is, but the, the argmax, it should be good if we overfit. So Uh huh. The problem is that we might just remove these end of sentence tokens, right? Cause, like, why? Why? Let's restart and this is the last try. If this doesn't work, we'll just take the loss. So we'll remove the end of sentence tokens like this. And let's hope the tokenizer puts them in itself. Like that, good. And we'll do the thousand epochs again. And there we go. Okay, last run for today. Wrong input, yeah. Yeah, we can ex inspect train data set entries after process data apply. That's a good idea. We should do that as well. I don't understand the meaning of the output. Can anyone explain? No, no one can explain. It. <laughs> That's it's 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 not the desired output. We're trying to predict text. And right now we're just it's it's garbage. So But what we're trying to do is overfit. Let's see. Uh, I could change this. Um, also, overfitting on one data point. We're just trying. We're just a just a bunch of researchers giving our best. Your input is from the full data set. What I mean, the f but I I take I just select the first entry like I I do select, I selected this entry. Ah, da -da, da -da. You're predicting the text from your full data set, but not from overfitting data set. Yeah, but the, the overfitting data set is taking, it's taking the, it's taking the first data point, right? The overfit data set selects exactly the first data set, uh, the first data point. So it selects the zero of the train data set. So this should be the same. I can I can try to just input. Um, I could try to input, yeah, I see. Is there a reason you're overfitting? Yes, it's because it's a good way to see if you don't have, a, like it's a good way to catch bugs. So, what you want to do is you want to take a single data point and then overfit to it. And if you can do that, it means that your model is okay, or well, it means your model can at least process data. That's essentially what it means. Uh, but 
for us right now. So let's let's call that x2 overfit data set zero, right? So um, x2 is now it's uh, a whole lot lot of zeros zero 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 no it's actually it's actually okay it's more than zeros um we can decode it uh tokenizer decode x2 input ids let's see if that yeah architecturally the school has a catholic character right this is fine this is and the answer saint bernadette we might oh this is here good so this is done automatically we don't have to do this and then the pad um maybe we'll leave away the pad because right now we're padding right and we technically don't need to pad or we also grab the mask yep maybe the masking is is the problem and label ids yeah this is fine and if we input now this into um let's input this so we'll take x2 right here and the decoder IDs will input nothing. List has no attribute to. Hmm. What was X2 again? This is just a list. We need to. Okay. Can we do this? I'm just. I'm just hoping here. Nope. There's no attribute shape. Yeah, we should. Uh, we should put it into a tensor. Um, how to make a tensor from this? Do I need to import PyTorch? Yeah, probably. Um, Uh, so okay how Okay, does anyone know how to make an int tensor tensor? Like this. Oh long. Yep. Do -do -do -do. Okay, yeah, so the output seems to be correct, but we can't overfit. So I have, okay, let's say we have a last trick up our sleeves and that is we remove the padding. So the model will just have to take whatever we have it. So the padding, we don't pad, we just truncate. Da, da, da.
Okay. How's it coming in? Excellent. Loss is decreasing. That is a good sign. And it's going to take another 90 seconds. Does anyone know how Yannick deletes a chunk of text with one button? It's probably, you mean like the entire line, like this? It's a, uh, oh no, uh, it's a Vim command. It's capital S. Uh, Tim is calling me. I should, <laughs> I should leave soon. <laughs> we're making, we're making the, the final argument, the final things for the next machine learning street talk. soon. You mentioned me as an inspiration for your master's application to ETH. Nice. <laughs> but I don't I don't think human resources is too happy with me, given that they've received calls in the past about my behavior. <laughs> so so maybe maybe don't don't mention that too much. Um, okay, okay, I mean, you know, no, to sample true, some things, something's wrong, like something's clearly wrong, I don't know what, but I'm doing something wrong with the, with the inputs right here. Um, like this is because it's, yeah, so I'm, I'm not sure what exactly, what exactly they are, what exactly they need, but here, fine tuning T5, um, A mixture of supervised, so here in supervised training, right? That's what they do. They have input IDs, they have labels. Um, oh, they have labels and not label IDs. The function automatically creates the correct decoder input IDs. Hmm. But you see, you see this. It seems weird because I'm not putting it and they <laughs> Yeah, something is something is definitely wrong. So labels, let's call it labels, right? Oh no, I'm I'm I was calling it labels all along. Label IDs, labels, label IDs, labels, labels, labels. Well, decoder IDs, hmm. It's worth a try. I mean, we might just try it until here. M 
might be the parameter where you can auto add the end token. Yes, yeah, true. Um, yeah, here you generate. So, um, da, 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 da. let's try. And instead of, yeah, here I have labels too. Oh, that's what I just changed a second ago. I see. Sorry for being dumb. Um, no, but here, labels, right? Cell is already running. Okay. Okay. What's your opinion on Jax? Um, well, given that it has a built in if I understand, I have not looked into Jax, but if I understand correctly as a built-in XLA compiler, which is really good if you want to do super custom stuff in PyTorch, uh, sorry, on TPUs, which I don't. Um, but I, I, as far as I've seen so far, I do like sort of the, it's much more clean. Um, so... You know, maybe if they put a, a bit more attention also on common usability, not just with uh, TPUs, I guess it, it might be a cool language. Is there any good suggestion for a master's in NLP. I have no idea. Sorry. I've chosen my university because it was the only one in the country that was like it was that was that was uh had the things that I wanted to or that I was interested in vaguely. See, got an unexpected labels. Why? Okay. How? No. Decoder IDs. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. All right. Maybe now. Labels? Yeah, no. What was it before? Decoder IDs, right? Decoder input IDs. That's better. That is better. No, you don't think so? Catholic, Catholic. And what did we want? To whom did the Virgin Mary allegedly appear? It's better than before. No, a uh, two, yeah. Did we say do sample? True. Now it just devolves again. I might be imagining that this is better than before. <laughs> but it has the end of in the main main of the main building. I might be imagining that this is better. Maybe also because it we trained it for not as long. Oh. I look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Okay. Decoder IDs. Whatever that means. But 
if I don't do decoder input IDs, but decoder IDs, I get the correct question. So we can in fact overfit on a single data point. Um, see, this is the output. It is the output, yes. It's padded to the left for whatever reason, but it is the output. And what if I put like a Q here? Yeah. Excellent. So it turns out that the most challenging part about doing machine learning is using the correct keyword arguments in the hogging face library. Coincidentally, this would be something where like copilot would be a killer at I've been I've been using this for a while now. And it's at this kind of stuff. It's really good. Um, so yes, so that that was essentially, this was where I wanted to get to today, we have a model that can take in question, sorry, context context answer pairs and give us questions. The next step is to take this and uh, make this train it on squad, then generate a data set of more questions and answers. And then we can use that to train another question answering model. And it, at the end of it, that one should be better than our original one that we just trained on the data set alone, which is a little bit magic, because we don't introduce new data, right? We don't. But what we do, what we can do is, you know, we always need, we need new question answer pairs. So the input to this model is going to be a context and an answer, and we let it produce a question. Now the context we just take from the same data set. But the, what is the answer? That is, um, that is the question. Well, ironically, that is the question. So what we can do is we can use something like a um, maybe like a, a sequence tagger, maybe from from spacey or so that recognizes nouns or noun phrases in the context. And then we'll just take these noun phrases as possible answers. So what these papers, this is not my idea, right? These are papers that that are in question answering, what they do is they'd find noun phrases, they would let this model that they've trained to produce questions, produce a question, given the context and this possible answer, then they use the original question answering model to check whether it actually gets it right. <laughs> and that's how they, they generate new data. That's essentially what we're going to do. But yeah, this was it for for today's live stream. Uh, I it took it took a bit longer, but it's good to refresh myself as well. Because as I said, I've been doing mostly plumbing coding and not machine learning coding. So this is fun. And I hope uh, I hope at least someone someone learned about the trick of overfitting on a single data point. Um, because I remember when I for when first someone told this to me, I was like, Oh, wow, this is, this is really helpful. And I'm sure most people know it by now, but it's still super helpful. All right. So in this case, thank you very much to everyone who's, who's been here. Um, I'm, I need to hop on a call with with Tim and Keith for the street talk. And yeah, I'll see you around. Thank you so much. And bye bye.